How's it going guys? What I wanted to do in this video is actually revisit the Sig Sauer P320. Recently, as many of you all have certainly heard, there has been another lawsuit against Sig Sauer, this time by a detective who was uh, supposedly shot by her firearm discharging while it was in her purse. And since then, there has been a lot of people online, again, several YouTubers and others who want to claim that this gun is unsafe. What I want to do in this video is take a look into the mechanics of this firearm to show you all what would have to fail in order for this gun to discharge on its own. Uh, now guys, I know that YouTube has some pretty strict rules on some things about firearms. We all know that. So, uh, you know, I'm, what I'm going to do is hope that they keep this video up. Uh, I'm not going to be showing any kind of disassembly or how to make or anything like that. What we're doing is simply showing some informational uh, stuff for you. Uh, first of all, I want to say that any firearm that you do not completely trust, you should not carry. Okay, that is regardless of the brand of the manufacturer that goes for any firearm on the market. However, I think that there are a lot of people that are jumping on the Bash SIG bandwagon uh, without getting a lot of information out there that needs to be put out into the market. I would appreciate it if you guys would share this video and also let me know your thoughts in the comments below about what we talk about here. Now, the SIG P320, this particular model, is one that was made after the voluntary upgrade program. Those early models did have the drop safe issue. I have talked about this in previous videos, if you guys want to go back and check those out. But what I wanted to focus on in this particular video is the issue that is currently at hand. I want to get a little further into detail about what all would have to fail. So what we're going to do, I'm actually going to pause the video because of YouTube's rules. Take this down and we will come back and get into the details. A few moments later. Okay guys, we now have uh, it apart and I want to focus initially just on the slide. Uh, and again, I hope that YouTube uh, does not strike this video, which I don't believe they will. I'm sure they won't. But uh, I would really appreciate it if you guys would share this information. What we see here is the breech face. This is where the cartridge would be prior to firing. Okay, we can see here that there is no firing pin protruding through the breech face. Let me just zoom in and you can see that it is not sticking through there. Okay, now in order for this gun to fire without uh, someone pressing the trigger, there are several things, several components that would have to mechanically fail. Not just one, but several. First of all, the firing pin sear that is located in the frame right here. We see the sear. This is going to catch the firing pin and actually hold it back. Now something uh, about the newer models is the fact that there is also a secondary ledge right in here that if the main ledge fails for any reason that it will capture on that secondary ledge of the sear. Now, that is not the only thing involved. Here is where the catch is on that. I'm actually going to push this forward. Okay, you see I'm pushing this forward and I want you to notice something. Do you see that firing pin protruding through that breech face? 
No, you do not. The reason for that is because of the firing pin block. Okay, there is a mechanical physical block that will keep that firing pin from going forward. Okay, no matter how hard I push, unless I was willing to push hard enough to physically break that firing pin block, that firing pin is not going to be able to strike the primer. Okay, this is the release mechanism for that firing pin block. Okay, the safety mechanism right here, when I press the trigger, you can see that that safety mechanism moves up. And what that does is as I press the trigger, it moves that safety block, that firing pin safety block out of the way. Okay. It moves it out of the way, and at that time, if I can do this, uh, let me see, because I want to show this to you guys just as much detail as, as possible. At that time, what I'm going to do, I am going to press in on that safety block, that firing pin safety block, and now I want you to look. That is when the firing pin can protrude through that breech face and hit the primer of a round. Okay? Now, I'm going to release that and you're going to see it drop back down just like there. But now, I'm trying to push forward on that again and it is not moving. Okay? Again, that firing pin block, you have to it has to be depressed. Once it is depressed, then the firing pin can protrude through that breech face. In order for that to happen, in order for this firearm to go off negligently or to go off without someone pressing that trigger, the things that are going to have to fail, you're going to have to have not only that first section of that sear fail, you're going to have to have that secondary section fail as well. Not only that, you will also have to have the firing pin safety block fail. Okay, even if this catch here, this part of the firing pin that is going to be held back by that sear, if for some reason that it broke for any reason whatsoever, metal fatigue or what, it still cannot go forward unless this firing pin block is moved out of the way. This is a physical piece of metal that is setting between the firing pin uh, being able to go all the way forward. It is a physical barrier. Now, something that we do not ever see anything of is any mechanical layout or any mechanical breakdown of the firearms that are supposedly going off on their own. Okay? We don't see that. And until, uh, until I see that, I am going to have to say that I do not believe that these firearms are going off on their own. The drop safety issue, yes, that was a legitimate issue, mainly because of the trigger weight, okay? SIG has addressed that. There have been changes made and, you know, to remedy that problem. However, but the part of the firearms supposedly going off on their own, uh, I would need to see the breakdown of one of those guns that had supposedly fired and someone to show me where each of these components has failed. Because again, it will take multiple failures in multiple components for this gun to be able to fire on its own. Okay? Multiple. Uh, you know, again, if you do not completely trust a firearm, don't carry it. But that can be said of all brands, all manufacturers, as I had mentioned earlier. Now, I'm not questioning 
that someone got injured. I am questioning the initial cause of that injury because unless that trigger is depressed, this firearm cannot discharge without the failure of all of those components. It is a physical impossibility. And if any of those components did fail, there would certainly be some kind of data out there, some kind of information out there showing the failure of the components within this firearm. Okay, We see from the latest lawsuit, uh, the detective that was injured, she had the gun within her purse. She had it in, I believe, it was a Serpa holster. And if for any reason, if something got against that holster, it could have very easily released that firearm, allowing it to come up with other things in her purse. Uh, if something had gotten against that trigger, and as she picked it up to move her purse around, if something got against that trigger, at that point, if that trigger was pressed, then we would certainly see an issue. Okay? But again, it would take something to physically press that trigger to release that safety mechanism, to release that firing pin block, as well as that sear in order for that gun to discharge. But guys, this is just a quick video that I wanted to do. I think that it is irresponsible for some of these gun channels that are going out that want to simply bash SIG to get views. Okay, you're not giving them the true story, you're not giving your audience the true story of everything that is going on. Now, if there is uh, some physical failures, if you guys know anywhere that there is some documentation showing photos or something else of the physical failures of the safeties that would allow this gun to fire, please let me know because I would like to know for myself. Okay, I have not seen any of that yet and until I do, I will still err on the side that this firearm is safe. Okay, it is safe for concealed carry, it is safe for home defense, it is safe for whatever purposes that you want to use it for, legal purposes that is. But guys, thanks for watching. Please share this video with uh, your, on your social media. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know how you think these could fail. I would love to hear your thoughts, guys, because again, this is something that if there is an issue, if there is a, show, a um, clear evidence that there's a problem with these guns, I would like to know myself. And not just video about stories where someone was supposedly injured, okay? There's been several of those stories that have been shown to be operator error. But guys, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the links. Uh, check out the links down in the description. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel. We will see you next time. And guys, don't just believe everything out there on the internet. Do some of the research for yourself. Visit my website at boomsticktactical.com, and we'll check you later.